of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, I'd like to extend my own word of welcome to uh, all of you this morning um, as you join me for the celebration of this, my final Mass here at Our Lady of the Wayside. It's, a, it's an emotional moment for me, uh, but I'm so happy that you are able to share in this uh, moment with me. Um, so I thank you for your, for your presence today, and we, we pray that the Lord will you know, allow a bit of good weather for us so, you know, we won't have to use our, our umbrellas today. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David, my father. But I am a very young man and skilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of this people of yours that you have chosen. A people so many, its numbers cannot be counted or reckoned. Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. For who could govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, and have not asked for long life for yourself, or riches, or the lives of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself, here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd, as none before you has had, and none will have after you. <coughs> the word of the Lord.
kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a haul of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen haul it ashore. Then sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into a blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said yes. And he said to them, well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things both new and old. Some good news for you. I got on the bathroom scales this morning. <laughs> and uh, I worked out that I think I've lost the equivalent of the total baggage allowance that most airlines <laughs> allow you to take on board, both combined uh, hold and uh, uh, what we take on. I think about 25 kilos, so I'm really chuffed with my uh, recent... Uh, uh, going to do when I go to Oscar because the food there is a bit uh, a bit stodgy it seems so I think I'll have to carry on the uh, the discipline anyway that's a bit of good news um, I want to uh, begin with a bit of a preamble really just to what I said at the beginning was to thank everybody for your presence here today it means a lot to me uh, that you've come to share this moment uh, with uh, this celebration uh, of mass um, and there are lots of people I want to thank because uh, an event like this just doesn't happen. It takes a lot of um, preparation. And I'm grateful to the school, for example, for allowing us to use the, the school field here. Perhaps this is a, a new way of doing church. Uh, and we're fortunate that we have this field so close to our parish church because we're very limited at the, at the moment as to the numbers that can actually enter. So it's great that I think over 200 people here uh, are here today. So thank you to the school to the stewards and the sacristans, those in the office who have, um, have carefully orchestrated and put this together with all the seating plan, and my thanks also to the choir. Today is the, uh, the first day uh, as a parish community that we can sing God's praises together because we can do so safely outside, and I'm grateful to uh, for the music and to the choir and for Helena for putting together the, the booklet that we have today. And please do take that home as a little memento uh, of today. Indeed, the Mass is filled with a, a lot of emotion for me because it is my last parish Mass here at Our Lady of the Wayside and uh, it coincides with a number of things really. It, it coincides with the, uh, also with the anniversary of my ordination. I was ordained um, on the 25th of July yesterday and I was actually ordained on a Sunday which meant that the liturgy of the day um, was taken from the 17th Sunday of ordinary time. So the same readings that we had today at Mass were the same ones that I had at my ordination day 27 years ago. Um, and it also coincides with my dad's anniversary as well, who passed away three years ago. Um, but I want to just talk about the, um, the Gospel very, very um, quickly, because uh, I'd be shortchanging you if I didn't say something about the gospel. And I must say, uh, I've had a lot of cards and messages, uh, people wishing me well here in the parish as I move on. And they seem to converge slightly because they all, most of them seem to say one particular thing of how much you've appreciated, um, you know, the the homilies that I've been able to give this, uh, these past uh, seven years with you. I must say, I do enjoy preaching. Uh, and um, I remember at a deanery meeting, Bishop Robert Byrne, he came to speak to the deanery. And having been a parish priest in Oxford for so many years himself, he said, as far as he was concerned, there were three main priorities for any parish, that our parishes should be places of prayer, 
where we come and leave the world behind and come into God's presence. Our, our churches, our parishes are places of prayer. They are places where the sacraments are celebrated. And thirdly, a place where the Word of God is preached. Uh, and preaching the Word of God is so central to our mission as priests. Uh, I just happened to notice on the time the academic timetable from Oscott, they start they start very soon uh, their course on homiletics on how to deliver homilies in the second year. When I was at college, they sort of delayed it until the fourth or the fifth year. But as soon as they start their training, the students already begin planning, you know, on how to to give good homilies. Um, and I've noticed here in the parish how attentive you have been uh, during the homilies that I've given and I hope that I've been able to you know show some give you some sort of food for thought as it were uh, because preparing a homily isn't easy it's quite difficult at times and I often think it's you know what I'm saying is a load of rubbish but <laughs> a lot of people as I say have been very complimentary uh, about uh, the words that I've shared with you um, so I wanted to just say something briefly about today's gospel because it is such a, a powerful gospel from Matthew where Jesus can, compares the, the, the kingdom of God to a hidden treasure, a pearl of great price, a fishing net and a storeroom. And when we think of kingdoms, you know, naturally we think of geographical places, don't we? But in fact, God's kingdom is closer to us than we can imagine and at the heart of any kingdom we find a king it stands to reason and for us when we think of the kingdom of god our king is god himself where he reigns supreme in our hearts and the key to understanding i think all of the readings because as you know the gospel and the first reading are linked and i think the underlying message between the first reading from uh, the book of Kings, where we hear Solomon, you know, being asked by the Lord, well, what would you like me to give you as a gift? And Solomon very astutely and wisely says, well, please give me the gift of discernment, of being able to judge wisely this people of yours. And it's that, I think that's the key. It's being able to discern, even for the gospel, how God king, God's kingdom is at work. Ultimately, that which is truly noble and worthwhile, those pursuits in our lives, is when, when we pursue those things, I think God then reigns as king in our lives. When we become, as I said at the beginning of Mass, when we are agents of mercy, when we become his agents of compassion, of generosity, of kindness, of forgiveness, but ultimately of love. When we do that, then God's kingdom begins to break through into our, our world, a world that so often is darkened by evil, wickedness, sin, and even death itself. And in setting our hearts and minds completely on God, and willing to give up everything for the great treasure of God's kingdom, when we do that, then we know that he will reward us for it uh, at, the, at the end of time. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you today about today's gospel reading. Um, but I want to briefly uh, just reflect uh, on my time here at Our Lady of the Wayside. Um, I can't believe that seven years have flown. Um, they have, they certainly have for me. Um, but I want to share with you some statistics. And uh, in the seven years here, uh, as parish priest. I went through the registers that we keep in our in the presbytery and it seems that within the seven years I've celebrated 274 baptisms, 16 weddings, seven receptions into full communion with the church and 182 funerals. Now being a parish priest is more than just celebrating a baptism, a wedding, a reception, or even a funeral. It's much more than that. Above all, the vocation of parish priest is that of being a pastor. And at the heart of the word pastor means what it means to be a shepherd. In other words, to be able to accompany you in your journey of faith 
to be able to share in your joys and sufferings, in your laughter and in your pain. I think that's what it means to be an aspect of what it means to be a shepherd. And, uh, forgive me, if you will, for um, quoting to you some canon law today during my homily. I don't want to bore you with this. But, uh, I thought I'd just read to you one particular canon. It won't take too long. It's canon 529. And it talks about what a parish priest is about. The suffering, the lonely, those who are exiled from their homeland and those burdened with special difficulties. He is to strive also to share, to ensure that spouses and parents are sustained in their fulfilment of their proper duties and to foster the growth of Christian life in the family. That explains really, in a nutshell, what being a pastor, what a parish priest is about. And I hope that I've been able to fulfill those qualities in my own way uh, these past seven years at your pastor here at Our Lady uh, of the Wayside. And the way I also see, and I'll end on this point really, the way I see my, my, um, my role as a parish priest um, is this, that if you think about it, your lives and all of our lives uh, from the moment we are born to the moment we die, it's as though God is unveiling a, a rich tapestry or a beautiful mosaic. You know, so we can compare our lives to a, a mosaic or a tapestry. And as you know, tapestries are made up of thousands of different threads. The same is true of a mosaic. If you ever get the chance to go to Ravenna in Italy, there are famous mosaics there. There's also particularly beautiful ones in Sicily, in Monreale, next to Palermo. That we, uh, if you go into the cathedral there, there's the, there's the, um, the mosaic of Christ Pantacrito. It's, a, it's based on a Byzantine Greek image of Christ. But the mosaic itself, as you know, is made up of thousands of different, of tiny little squares. And of course, it's only when we see those squares together as a whole that we see the, the picture in its beauty and in its entirety. And I'd like to think of my time here, these seven years here that I've been with you at Our Lady of the Wayside, as a tiny square in the story of your lives. A tiny square that makes up the whole picture of your life. And I'd like to think of myself in these seven years of being a tiny square in that beautiful image that you all have and that you are. I'm grateful to God that he has allowed me, you know, to share in your lives. And that's the privilege of being a priest. You know, I don't, you know, I, as a priest and as a parish priest, I have access to people's lives on a level that other people wouldn't be allowed in. And that's the great beauty and joy of being a parish priest, of being uh, a pastor. Um, when I celebrated Mass here last time on the field, it was with the, um, the school children uh, in year six. It was their leaders' Mass. And uh, very kindly, uh, the children had made for me a, a card, a beautiful card, um, and the card was, they had all signed, each of the children in the school at Our Lady of the Wayside School had all signed little messages. But on the front cover, it was a big sort of almost A3 size uh, booklet, as it were, was a picture of me meeting the Holy Father, Pope Francis, back in 2018. Um, but the words were, Arrivederci, Father Gerardo. And that's a lovely word to use, Arrivederci. I'd rather people say Arrivederci to me rather than goodbye. The thing about goodbye in English is it sounds rather too definitive. And the beauty about the Italian word Arrivederci is that it, it combines almost two words together. Arrivare means to arrive and vederci, to see each other again. 
So the sense that it conveys is that, well, until that time, until we see one another again. So t today, rather than saying goodbye to me, I'd rather you say Arrivederci for that moment to come. Again, please God, when we will be able to see one another. I want to just to say thank you for all that you've done for me. Thank you for your, um, your companionship, for your warmth, for your affection, and for your love. These are things that I will treasure and take with me, things that will last with me forever. God bless you. Thank you.